Well, while Canada and North Dakota are responsible for more than 80% of the canola grown in North America, we are starting to see more and more farmers trying their hand at it right here in the south. Damon Jones visited one of those growers in Bainbridge where this new crop is starting to take off. When talking about cash crops in the state of Georgia, canola would be pretty far down the list. However, that hasn't stopped farmers here in Decatur County from branching out in the hopes that these fields of gold will turn into just that. I was just looking for another crop to kind of fill the void in the winter time to keep the employees busy and and um, you know we just needed something to kind of split the uh, cost you know on equipment, employees and uh, land rent and uh, I found canola which has worked out pretty good. Kevin Rents has been growing canola for the past four years longer than any other farmer in the area and while there were some growing pains in the beginning, he's more than happy that he stuck with it. And the first year was pretty rough. We had a hailstorm come through, and um, every year's been different, but the last two have been profitable for me. Um, and this year looks to be profitable if the weather holds out, which we're close to harvest now. Even though change doesn't come easy to a number of farmers growing canola, isn't really that big an adjustment. In fact, Rents keeps his cost down by using the exact same tractors that he uses during the fall. Pretty much any equipment that you've already got. Uh, I, I didn't have to go out and make any big expense, you know, purchases on anything new. And um, it's, it's just like any other crop, row crop that we have around here. And while South Georgia might not be the canola capital of the world, farmers in this area still produce as high a quality of product as you can find anywhere. Combine that with the time of year it's grown, and this could be a major crop in the future. Like I say, during the winter months, there's not much around here to fill the gaps, and uh, this is really a, a money, it's not a get rich, you know, quick deal, but it, you can make money off of it, and um, I've been trying to push it for the last few years, you know, trying to get more people involved, but uh, like I say, I think people are just afraid that the harvest of it is going to be so tough, but it's really not. And the reason for the concern is the size of the bean. As you can see, it's much smaller than your typical soybean. However, it's a dilemma that hasn't really been a problem so far. We've got pretty new equipment, combines. Some of the older stuff might be a little uh, hard to, to hold it in, you know, with the cracks and all, but we haven't had a bit of trouble uh, harvesting this crop. This field is set to be harvested in the next few weeks, and behind that, cotton will be planted. And if history is any indication, the yields will be substantial. Um, behind this field, we'll have cotton. Um, you can grow soybeans, but uh, soybeans kind of interfere with my rotation, and it's really worked good growing cotton behind the uh, canola. Um, made some of my best yields with all the residual fertilizer left. It just deteriorates, and the soil takes it up just like you would an application of uh, a granular fertilizer. So with the ease of growing and possible money to be made, Rents has one piece of advice to farmers interested in getting into the canola business. Just to... To, to get out there and at least try, give it a chance because it's, it's, it's really a great uh, crop. Um, I enjoy growing it. It's been, it's, you know, fun to learn new things and um, it's really nothing to lose. Next week, I'll take a look at a Bainbridge company that's taking this locally grown canola and making it into fully biodegradable plastics. Reporting from Decatur County, I'm Damon Jones for the Georgia Farm Monitor.